Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So this is another verse that I think gets people in a lot of trouble because I think that all of us have heard this verse or this passage and thought to themselves, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. I can, I can have literally whatever I want. So they pray for a lot of money. They pray for like a, a big, big house. They pray for a lot of success in a sport or a, a significant other right now or, or whatever. And they are disappointed because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Number one, God is not going to give you things that don't align with his will. So when Solomon asked for wisdom, that was something that pleased God. God definitely wants to give you things like wisdom. There's the old adage that if you ask for patience, that you have to be careful asking for that because God will put you in some situations that will give you a lot of patience. So we need to pray for things that are in accordance with God's will. That unfortunately oftentimes is not going to be money or a big house or things like that. Remember that God's number one focus is not to make you a successful human being on this earth. It's not to make you wealthy and rich and successful by the world's standards. God is looking to make you spiritually wealthy. God wants to bless you so that you will be his hands and feet in this world. And unfortunately, that might require going through some difficult times here. It's just like the saying goes, pressure makes diamonds. The sanctification process, the process that makes us more and more like Jesus each and every day can oftentimes be really difficult. When we ask for things that are in accordance to God's will, he gives us those things. It's not going to be just one day something's just gonna show up on your doorstep or one day you'll wake up and wow, I just feel so patient and just joyful today. That's not how it works. You have to go through things. They aren't always horrible. We kind of have a tendency to believe as humans, I think that God's going to make us go through some really, really difficult task in order to achieve whatever. But oftentimes it is, and we have to be ready for that reality as well. So, But take solace in the fact that God is, is really looking out for your good. He is not going to give you something horrible when you ask for something good. Even asking for a, a godly spouse. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and if you really ask God earnestly for a desire that's in your heart, it says in the Bible that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. So he's not going to deny those things for you as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And that doesn't mean being perfect, but it does mean trying your best to repent and to live for Jesus. Matthew 7, 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few that find it. This is another doozy of a verse because a lot of people like to kind of spread this notion that if you just say a prayer to Jesus and if nothing happens in your life, there is no life change at all, that you are still going to go to heaven. And this passage says otherwise. Why would the Bible, why would, why would Matthew say here that the path is narrow if anybody that prayed a prayer just got into heaven. There are so many verses that people like to quote that talk about, yeah, just just believe in believe in God and you'll be you'll be you'll be great. But Jesus says over and over and over again that you have to believe these things and you have to repent. You have to repent. There's a reason that that Jesus talks about all of these sins and, and needing to repent from them. Like Jesus says, I believe that it would be easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get to heaven. 
And that's because there's so many false doctrines out there. And there's so much temptation to drift from God. As you'll see later on in this chapter, not everyone that calls on Jesus' name will go to heaven. Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Now, one thing that I hear all the time is atheists or people that are in general skeptical of Christianity will say, how can you believe in a religion where pastors and priests take advantage of their mega churches? They, in some cases, abuse children. There have been horrible stories um, in various churches of people being sexual predators um, from, from their position in the church. And what I would say is that Matthew seven fifteen through 20 lets you know that those people, those people are not Christians. They are not. And that doesn't mean that they can't change and have real genuine life change and really repent of those things. But the Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. It says here that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Now, there are definitely going to be instances where good people mess up. But think about this analogy here. An apple tree doesn't grow apples overnight. It doesn't grow apples instantly. Fruit takes a long time to come about. It sprouts and it grows. Good trees or good people, people that really have Christ's intentions or godly intentions, they might mess up. And they might have times where they're not growing fruits. They're not growing good fruits. But what separates those people from those that grow bad fruits is that it takes consistently being rooted in good or consistently being rooted in evil in order for you to grow evil or good fruits. So while a good pastor can mess up and he doesn't grow bad fruits like it talks about in Matthew 7, a bad pastor can very easily, if he is firmly rooted in evil, if he has some evil agenda going on, he'll grow evil fruits because it's over time. Know them by their fruits. 